Welcome to the uh, April 8th meeting of the Board of Douglas County Commissioners. Um, before we start, I uh, want you to ask, we ask that you be patient with us as we work through these technology challenges. If visual aids are used during the meeting, the presenter will share the screen with the, with the call, we'll share them on the screen with the call. Participants will not be able to view those slides if you don't have a computer, a smartphone, or a tablet. All participants will be entered into the meeting with their audio muted, meaning we won't be able to hear you. Presenters will be unmuted when their agenda item comes up. We do ask that all line presenters use good conference call etiquette and mute their line when not speaking and introduce themselves each time they speak. If you have a public comment on the agenda item, under regular public comment or under regular public comment. We're going to ask you, we're going to try something new and ask you to raise your hand in Zoom. Uh, staff will then call on you and unmute you. We ask your uh, speakers who are giving public comment to give their name and address the commission for about three minutes or so. Um, we'll see how many people need to talk. The county reserves the right to shut off the microphone or remove any speaker from the meeting if they're vulgar, rude, or inappropriate. We don't expect that that will happen, but we just want to make sure. Uh, yes, your chat function has been disabled, and a recording of the meeting will be available on the website after each meeting. Thanks for going on this new adventure with us. We will start with our consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? Approve the consent agendas items one, two, and three. Move to approve. Second. We have a move and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Excellent. Now we'll move on to our regular agenda item. First item is a neighborhood revitalization area or NRA to construct a mixed use project. At approximately 800 Pennsylvania Street. And I'll turn it over to Sarah to introduce any presenters that we have. Uh, commissioners uh, and the public, this is Sarah Plinsky, County Administrator. This particular item um, at the, the city, the Lawrence City Commission was not able to meet last night and review this item and our standard course of practice with NRAs is to uh, have the city approve them first and then the county and the school district follow. So I'd, I'd ask that we defer this item to next week's agenda. I have been in con I have spoken to um, city staff today and they do believe they will have this item on next week's agenda and have it uh, voted on. All right. Thank you, Sarah. I have a motion to defer this item. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. So that moves on to our second item, which is a public hearing on the creation of the Douglas County Fire District number six. Sarah? Commissioners, uh, I thank you so much for uh, having this item on the agenda today. I'm going to turn it over to Cami Owens, our budget manager, who is helping us guide this project internally. And uh, she can kind of walk you through the resolution. Uh, good evening, commissioners. This is Cami Owens, Douglas County budget manager. Um, uh, this is my first time speaking. I assume you can hear. Yep. Okay, yeah. good. Um, the, you have before you uh, the resolution to um, finalize creating uh, fire, new fire district number six. Um, we started this process on March 4th, and um, this is the adoption and public hearing um, on the proposed creation of fire district number six. It is the final step in a two part process, or, or the final step in the first part of a two part process. Um, and then the next step will begin with the merging of the three fire districts, one, four, and six. So um, the resolution lays out the steps that we've already taken and it does lay out a little bit, it's, it's in the packet. It does lay out a, a little bit of what is to come um, and I here for any questions. Everybody's on mute but me. 
I don't have any questions for you, Cami. Thanks, Cami. I don't have any questions. Mr. Thelman, anyone have questions? No. no. Nope. Oh, I did forget to mention we do have formal letters of um, support from both fire districts number one and four on file now. Great. Um, this is a public comment item, so we're going to take our first swing at public comment. Um, Sarah, is there anybody there at the courthouse for public comment? No, there is not. Okay. And Jill, are there any of the attendees raising their hand wanting to comment on this item? Nope. All right. So seeing no public comment, I would entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve and second a public hearing to accept public comments on the proposed creation of the Douglas County Fire District number six and approve the attached resolution finalizing the organization of Douglas County Fire District number six or direct staff to amend the resolution as necessary. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, approved. Item 2.3 is an authorization to sign utility relocation agreements for project number 201421, Route 1055 improvements from Route 458 to North 1175 Road. And I think Keith Browning is our staff member on this. Is that right, Sarah? Yes, and, and Jill, I apologize since this was a late addition to our agenda. I don't know if we got Keith listed on your participant list. Okay, commissioners, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Very good. Um, <clears throat> so as you know, we plan to improve Route 1055 from Route 458 north to the Wakarusa River uh, this summer. And as part of that, uh, we have to relocate some utilities, uh, one of which is a gas line for uh, Atmos Energy. Uh, they have provided us with an estimate that's um, to relocate their lines. Um, they also require an agreement with us. Uh, the cost that they estimate in the agreement is $110,517. Uh, they've told us they think it'll be closer to $80,000, but nevertheless, the agreement says $110,517. Um, we do have uh, money in the CIP for utility relocations for this project. Uh, the other big ticket relocation on this project will be for rural water district number four, and that will be about $95,000. So we did plan on these um, pretty high expenses for this project. So I'm asking for authorization for me to sign the agreement with Atmos Energy. Thank you, Keith. Commissioners, any questions for Keith? No. Nope. Okay, so I'll turn it over to Sarah. Sarah, this is a public comment item. Anybody there in the courthouse want to talk on this one? Nope. Okay. Um, Jill, any member of the public raising their hand wanting to speak on this one? Nope. Okay. All right, with that, I'd entertain a motion on item 2.3. So I'll go ahead and make the motion. I'm gonna motion that we authorize the public works director to sign an agreement with Atmos Energy for the relocation of gas lines required for project number 2014-21, route 1055 improvements from route 458, north 1000 road to North 1175 Road. Second. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sarah, the next item is appointments, and I don't think we had any in our packet. Nope. Okay. So now it's time for general public comment. Um, you're starting to get the rhythm of this. Sarah, is there anybody there at the courthouse that would like to provide general public comment? There is none. Okay, Jill, 
anybody online who'd like to give some general public comment? Nope. No. All right. I have to say I'm slightly disappointed. I was looking forward to that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Commissioner or Administrator Miscellaneous, and we usually start with Sarah on this. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. Um, you know, I, I can't help but smile. I think this is just a really uh, great example of how uh, local elected officials are doing their best to, to change, adapt, um, accommodate, and overcome the challenges faced to us by this recent epidemic. And um, I'm just very proud of us as an organization and you as a commission for doing our best to be responsible for social distancing practices and following the governor's order, but yet also taking care of the business of our community and making sure that, that uh, we are still able to proceed with um, the work that is in front of us. So thank you for that. Um, I, the only thing I, I would be glad to answer any questions and do a small report on our current COVID-19 planning and the Unified Command. Um, Unified Command is continuing to meet um, our every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Our, our operational period are those two days. We have not majorly modified our objectives um, for the current operational period. We are looking at refining some of those uh, objectives um, to be a little bit more action-oriented to some some of the new challenges ahead of us. And when I have those uh, refined objectives, I'll share them with the commission. And I anticipate being able to share that at the next meeting we have, um, but no real major changes. Uh, commissioners have been seeing the updates um, and the public has also seen the updates from public health and LMH about the current number of cases we have. Um, we, still, we still believe that we are not at widespread local transmission, which is really when we move over from um, travel related and exposure related cases to uh, were unclear as to where they received how how they became infected um, so there are um, we're still kind of holding and monitoring that the um, public health department is working closely with Kansas Department of Health and Environment to um, monitor the trend the kind of surge potential and where do we think our peak will be um, we're monitoring that closely. I, I think it's important for the public to know that that all the questions that you think we should be asking um, in terms of our what what that peak will look like, what uh, will our hospital be able to meet that need for our community? Do we have the appropriate resources and personal protective equipment to meet those needs? Your unified command is asking those questions, and we are getting answers for those questions. I feel very confident that we are that we are managing this appropriately. We have a separate group related to logistics that is receiving shipments of PPE from the national stockpile and from the state of Kansas and monitoring those inventories and volumes and then distributing it to uh, the various healthcare and law enforcement and first responder agencies that need it. Uh, I'm incredibly impressed just how people are sharing um, and, and, and helping each other out in this situation. Uh, so that's really tremendous. Um, uh, another sort of twist to everything that's happened with this has been the CDC recommendations to wear a mask um, when people are out in public. And that impacts our members of our workforce that are still interacting with the public. To that end, uh, I have authorized um, that we are gonna begin purchasing cloth masks for our county employees, um, that we were able to find a local um, uh, business, um, Blue Collar Press, that is manufacturing cloth masks. Um, and uh, to um, make those masks, they believe they can get them to us in less than a week. And we ordered uh, to include all county employees and uh, volunteer fire departments is around 600 masks. So we, I went ahead and we approved that order today. Um, I didn't, I, I felt like at that price range, it's well within my administrative authority to approve um, that we should just proceed with doing that and not worry so much about is this person particularly working inside, you know, uh, working at home or working out. We are asking our workforce to, to do things that we've never asked them to do before. Um, and, and, and try to be flexible and adaptive to this current situation. So I think it is just gonna be simpler to just go ahead and 
make that order and, and make sure we can deliver that. Um, City of Lawrence has been very helpful with making sure that our first responders have masks now, today, um, and they have been working to supply those for the jail and youth services, and so they've been doing that already. Um, I do want to mention that our um, the United Way has, has uh, joined us in this effort and is accepting community-based donations for homemade masks and other materials. Um, really, you know, since so much of the, our, our human service agencies are, are always looking for, for help and particularly when faced with this, this, this um, epidemic, um, the resources are even more limited for them to do what they need to do to take care of people. So uh, United Way is at the fairgrounds at our community building, um, which is our sort of indoor arena. Uh, twice a week, they are accepting donations. Um, on their website is a list of particular items that they're accepting, accepting donations for. They're coordinating with Unified Command and Logistics if they receive medical items, how they can get distributed to, uh, to the medical team. And I would say, like, I know that they just received a, shipment from from KU for another round of, of gloves uh, and so like uh, the I'm just incredibly impressed with how people are coming out of the woodwork to really help um, our community be prepared for this um, for our and then they are also accepting uh, per, non-perishable food donations for just food um, and they're also uh, United Way is managing our volunteer efforts so we encourage folks to reach out to 211 to check out that website if they want to get involved. Um, we, you know, it's going to take the whole community to help see us through this. Um, I, there are a number of efforts underway to particularly address the needs of our congregate living environments and our unsheltered environments. Um, the LMH is doing a lot of work to stand up, uh, bring an additional workforce. Um, so doctors and nurses that have not or not maybe currently working in the hospital, um, bringing them back to um, have them be a part of their workforce for this effort. I, I believe they have uh, approximately 50, a little over 50 folks that have come back to help be a part of their service um, and serve their community in this effort. So um, we're, real ex we're real excited to have them on that team and um, to support that effort. Um, City of Lawrence is doing a lot of work to try to still keep basic services provided to the residents of the city of Lawrence, um, trying to make sure trash pickup still happens on time and that water service and wastewater service is still done appropriately um, and transit services are still available to the community. So uh, I know they're working hard on that effort as well. Um, that's, um, uh, that's about what I have to report and for Unified Command, but I'd stand for any questions the commissioners might have for me. Any questions, commissioners? No, just uh, want to extend my thanks uh, for all the, the extra work that you've taken on and um, and everybody else. And thank you for keeping us up to date. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I just also want to express my gratitude and especially call out Carrie Britt a little bit, our communications person she has done such a great job of not only keeping us surprised of what's going on and, and the decisions that are being made but also the community so great job on Carrie's part I know a lot of people are doing great work I hate to single somebody out but Carrie's really really stepped <laughs> up it's been really great um I I would just add that um on the local small business front um, Sarah is nice enough to let me get included in that economic recovery group that meets um, every Wednesday. And so it's Chamber and KU and various businesses and um, city county folks and, um, and the Douglas County Community Foundation. And so Chip uh, let us know that um, the nonprofit community was contacted. Um, earlier this week, or, or maybe it was late last week, and that Rise Lawrence um, fund that they've raised about $125,000 for so far, and they continue to raise money from the community um, 
that applications will be accepted um, or they're, they're, they are being um, made now from our local nonprofits and uh, a small group of um, kind of an advisory committee will be um, awarding grants from that fund, I think as early as next week. It's gonna be a pretty quick turnaround. So I think that's a great effort by um, the Community Foundation and the Chamber and everyone who started that Rise Awards work. And um, I know the Lawrence uh, Restaurant Association is also busy raising funds for those folks. So I just, anything we can do to keep promoting that kind of local fundraising for folks while they're waiting for their unemployment checks and their small business disaster loans and all of the all of that stuff anything we can do to keep raising that up would be great yeah so many out so many people out there working so hard and doing so many great things and having said that i think we do i know my fellow commissioners share with me we want to remind people to stay home um, and only travel for those essential businesses follow the guidelines from Lawrence Douglas County Public Health. Um, we know it's hard. <laughs> we know there's lots of things we might rather be doing. Um, but for the health of everyone and the safety of everyone in our community, we ask you to stay at home. Um, we ask you to follow social distancing guidelines when you just have to be out for essentials. And please, please, please wash your hands. That's the best way to, to uh, avoid getting sick and getting others sick. Sarah, any other reminders you have for our community from, from our Unified Command team? You know, all I would say is to continue to monitor uh, the Coronavirus Hub website that is on our main page, as well as um, linked to on other pages, really gets the latest and greatest information in terms of the governor's orders. Um, you know, the governor released an order and then rescinded an order. That's all being updated through our website, all of our up-to-date information. And there's some really great... Um, you know, there's some great videos on there, some interviews with some our local nurses that are, are part of this effort um, and some others, uh, including some local celebrities. Um, so, you know, interviewed and those links are on there. So I just encourage folks to, to dig into that website, check out all the links and, and scroll down and, and read what's going on. And, and I think you'll be very impressed with what we've been able to put out to the community. Commissioners, any other items before we adjourn? Nope, I miss being there and seeing everyone. Uh, this is really strange, but yep. you know, this went pretty well, I think. Well, and my apologies again for the glitches. I did, I thought I had it down and, and I didn't. So <laughs> I'll do better next week. <laughs> so thank you, Amy and Jim for, uh, and Jill for your help with the, the technology and getting uh looks, I don't know if it's Hollywood Squares or Brady Bunch, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, very proud of our entire Douglas County team for stepping up. We had a great practice session this morning as we figured this out and, and uh, even made some <laughs> tweaks after that. So thank you so much to everybody. Stay All right. Stay safe, everybody. Thank Please, you. thank you. Stay safe. And with that, our meeting is adjourned. <laughs>